I am David Hayes, the Deputy Secretary, and you are watching This Week at Interior. This Week at Interior. Secretary Salazar and National Park Service Director Jonathan Jarvis this week designated 13 new National Historic Landmarks, landmarks that tell the story of America from the Civil War through prohibition to the fight for civil rights and national identity in modern America in locations that span the national map from Puerto Rico to Kentucky, New Jersey to eastern Oklahoma, and many others in between. In the stadium used by uh, uh, baseball players in the old Negro Leagues uh, to uh, mural, uh, done by one of uh, the foremost uh, muralists uh, from Mexico um, to uh, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, which is today an icon of the civil rights movement uh, and is probably more responsible for the passage of the Civil Rights Act uh, than any other one thing. There are many people who plan uh, travel destinations or vacations around historic sites um, and to have the designation of National Historic Landmark and the plaque that goes with that uh, will certainly draw people to come see them. For a complete listing of all 13 new historic sites, check out mps.gov. Secretary Salazar and Director Jarvis joined Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley to break ground on the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad State Park. Tubman, who died 100 years ago this past week, helped many slaves escape captivity in the years before the Civil War, including her own family members. The new visitor center at the state park will help honor this remarkable woman and educate generations to come about her selfless work. This week, Secretary Salazar approved three renewable energy sites in California and Nevada, part of the president's all of the above energy strategy. Together, the 750 megawatt McCoy Solar Energy Project, the 150 megawatt Desert Harvest Solar Farm, and the 200 megawatt Searchlight Wind Energy Project will power an estimated 340,000 American homes. Secretary Salazar says projects such as these bolster rural economies by generating good jobs and reliable power. The American Indian College Fund has been selected to administer the Student Scholarship Fund authorized by the Cobell Settlement, and a fifth of the annual scholarships will be awarded by the American Indian Graduate Center. In a statement, Secretary Salazar said, this scholarship fund for Native American students will be a lasting, meaningful legacy of the Cobell Settlement that will help strengthen Indian communities advance tribal progress, and secure a better future for the first Americans. In selecting these qualified organizations and in seeking the best trustees to oversee this educational fund, we are honoring Eloise Cobell and helping to empower Indian country. And Secretary Salazar this week signed an historic agreement in New Mexico aimed at spurring economic growth in Indian country. The Secretary joined Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs Kevin Washburn and Pueblo Sandia Governor Victor Montoya to sign off on tribal regulations approved under the HEARTH Act. HEARTH stands for Helping Expedite and Advance Responsible Tribal Home Ownership. It restores the authority of federally recognized Indian tribes to control the leasing of tribal lands, which promotes tribal self-determination and spurs economic development. That's This Week at Interior. <music> 